said I'ma crush it, call me. Welcome to Unsung. I'm Anthony Walker, friend of the city and your host of Unsung, our region's nonprofit online news magazine show. This episode, we're coming to you from the lovely, quiet neighborhood of Beachview, out enjoying the weather before it makes a turn. In this episode, we ride along with a mobile detailing unit that is more than meets the eye, and in our submitted videos, the Heinz Endowments share an interview with Aaron Minces of Earthworks. And as usual, we go to the news first, and this lead item is your generosity. Public donations of more than $7.6 million set a new fundraising record for the Pittsburgh Foundation's 24-hour day of giving last week. And it took the total funding support for local nonprofit organizations through the Foundation's online Pittsburgh Gives program to over $21 million in three years. Individual contributions that flowed into Pittsburgh Gives from midnight to midnight totaled $7,046,383 and they will each receive an equal prorated share of the $750,000 matching funds, creating a total for $7,796,383 raised for nonprofits. A day of giving for Westmoreland, which ran simultaneously, received public donations of $605,547, which shared a match pool of $80,000, bringing their total to $600,000, $85,547 altogether. Combined, it produced an $8.4 million boost for local nonprofits, an increase of more than 31% on the $6.4 million raised by the event last year. All this data is preliminary and is subject to financial and administrative reconciliation by foundation staff, which is expected to be completed by early next week. Our Day of Giving brings together families and individuals from all walks of life who dig deep to support the critical work of our nonprofit organizations, said Grant Oliphant, the Foundation's president and CEO. Once again, they have demonstrated overwhelming generosity, and once again, they have set new records for charitable giving in our community. We are amazed and delighted by the result. On October 9th, the Private Industry Council of Westmoreland Fayette County, Inc. will mark some exciting milestones with a ribbon-cutting ceremony in the 12th Annual Celebration of Achievement. PIC is a nonprofit organization based in Greensburg that works to build tomorrow's workforce in southwestern Pennsylvania through job training, education, employment, business, and early childhood development services. This spring, the organization broke ground for a 3,650 square foot building expansion at its headquarters office on 219 Donahue Road, Greensburg. Completed earlier this summer, the expansion project includes three classrooms, a computer lab, three offices, and 40 additional parking spaces. It has always been our mission to assist individuals in moving into self-sustaining employment, said Tim Urison, president and CEO at PIC. The extra space will complement this mission, enabling PIC to expand and enhance its educational and workforce development services and allowing the organization to impact even more individuals who are facing workforce and education related barriers. This expansion was made possible through a grant from the Richard King Mellon Foundation, a community development block grant from Westmoreland County, revenue from PIC's education and technology institute and private donation. Commonwealth Court Judge Robert Simpson has ruled that Pennsylvanians will not need a photo ID to vote November 6, 2012 election. Judge Simpson's order, which could be appealed by either party back to the Supreme Court, states that Pennsylvania's tough new voter identification requirement not be enforced in the presidential election. The state Supreme Court wanted Simpson to stop the voter ID from taking effect in this year's election if he found that the state hadn't met this law's promise of providing easy access to photo ID, or if he believed it would prevent any registered voter from casting a ballot. The new law called for each voter to show a particular form of photo ID, such as a driver's license, passport, active military ID, nursing home ID, or college student ID. The prior law required identification only for people voting in a polling place for the first time, and it allowed non-photo documents such as utility bills or bank statements. Recently, we had a chance to take a look at kid mobile detailing and how they're helping teach people to get the skills they need to join the workforce. Here's the report. Kid mobile detailing was developed as a vocational program 
under the Fairweather Lodge model, which is a housing program for adults with mental illness. It's run as any normal business would be run, just under the umbrella of the 501c3 organization. This was set up by our own home, and it was actually 10 years in the making to establish their Fairweather Lodge out of Moon Township. The Fairweather Lodge program was actually developed in the 1960s by a Dr. Fairweather because he saw that adults with serious mental illness, many times uh, the families, it's not that they had given up on them, but they'd been through a lot and it was difficult for them to find stable housing. And without stable housing, you can't have stable employment. The individuals involved with this program have ongoing mental illnesses and some are in recovery. Some are, have gone through the recovery process. Some have actually been homeless and that makes them eligible to live then in the lodge. Uh, it's helped me with my mental health in many ways. Getting along with the different people, living with the roommates again. You know, I hadn't had a roommate since college, so this, you know, that was something nice. And it's good to have people around me. Uh, and the business opportunity has given me like a sense of, you know, I'm, I'm doing something positive. There's, some, uh, there's something I'm doing instead of just sitting around and, you know, dwelling on my depression and my, my addiction problems. But it's helped me out a lot in many ways. Oh, it's helped me a lot. You know, it's you know I'm, you know eventually I'm working on getting my own place and that sort of thing. But um, you know it's a nice, it's a good, it's helped me a lot to get to you know to to be able to get to that point. So yeah, it's been very helpful. Well, I think everything we do is a success story. Every employment opportunity that we can give these individuals, um, you know, it builds self-esteem. We all want to feel that we contribute something valuable. There are two gentlemen who live at the Fairweather Lodge who are directly involved in this. We also have 15 at-large members that we've trained through Mercy Behavioral Health and Staunton Clinic. And we continue, we're going to start another training program in October and our goal is that this is self-sustaining and ongoing. Well, Kid Mobile Detailing is a little unique in that we bring the product to you. A lot of people are very busy these days and they, and they don't have the time to take their car and leave it at a detail shop. So we can do residential details. Uh, we are EPA compliant. We do have a containment system that we can set up and use in areas that require that. We're also investigating the possibility of doing more commercial contracts. Uh, we're uh, trying to get up with Thermo Fisher Scientific on the south side to do details for employees while they're at work. And I think that's kind of a nice item to have. I know I would love it if I could go to work and have my guard detailed. <laughs> well, we're always soliciting new trainees because our workforce, you know, not everyone is available every day. So we're always looking to build the workforce. Our long-term goal is to get a second van. So we're always looking uh, to pull individuals who would be eligible for the training program. Uh, just, just talk to your uh, ICM worker or if you have a person that helps you you know, find places like this. That's how I found it through an ICM worker. Just not to give up hope, just uh, there's always something out there. If you keep looking, you know, there's something that you can find that will help you. Yeah, I mean, if the opportunity arises, I mean, I think it's a good opportunity and I think it's, you know, it can help even if you, I think they're going to have some training sessions again here in a month or so. So, um, you know, it's, it's a good opportunity even if you don't want to work maybe for the business full time or so, it could help you maybe in another avenue as well to get it, maybe to you know, find some work if that's what you're looking for. Well, we will have a website up and running. Our email address is kidmobile1 at gmail.com and they can email us and we can send them out a price sheet. Heinz Endowments recently sat down with Aaron Mintz of Earthworks to discuss fracking. Let's take a look. Hi, uh, my name is Aaron Mintz's and I'm with Earthworks. And Earthworks is a national nonprofit organization that works to protect communities and the environment from the irresponsible impacts of extraction industries. And I wanted to just briefly talk about two issues that we typically work on. Uh, one is a federal one and one is a more regional one. I work on policy issues and some advocacy campaigns here. Uh, on the federal side, I want to talk about uh, the diesel guidance. In 2005, the United States Congress passed the Energy Policy Act of 2005 and as you recall what they did there was they exempted hydraulic fracturing operations from regulation under the Safe Drinking Water Act. Exempted them entirely but they said 
if diesel is used in the fracking process, the EPA can still regulate it. Congress during the Florida debate said, well, diesel causes cancer, it's very, very harmful, so even though we're exempting it, we will still allow EPA to regulate diesel fuel when uh, in the fracking process when diesel is used. Flash forward some seven years later now, finally the EPA has issued a draft guidance to states and to regional offices on how best to implement or how best to regulate the use of diesel fuel. And so what we at Earthworks with our friends at Clean Water Action and a number of other groups have put together a campaign to help try to influence the EPA on that, on this whole process, on this guidance process. So we scrambled together letters from key constituencies like the drinking water sector, uh, trade associations, over 20 different NGOs from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, as well as scheduling lobby meetings with the Office of Management and Budget, the Environmental Protection Agency, members of Congress. Uh, we submitted over 100,000 uh, grassroots comments from our members and our friends out in the field, as well as technical comments as well. Uh, and so the deadline for the diesel guidance comments passed a couple months ago, and we're looking forward to seeing what EPA comes with, up with. Hopefully they'll go forward with formal rulemaking soon. And, uh, and the drum beat goes on. Uh, the other thing I want to mention was the Susquehanna River Basin Commission, which is this very obscure and kind of insular group that grants permits to withdraw water from the Susquehanna River. Um, and we were concerned because they seemed to be granting them willy-nilly and not taking a comprehensive cumulative approach to the issuing of these permits. And Earthworks, with a number of our friends in the region, um, have organized a campaign where we merged a lot of the grassroots groups, uh, the grassroots groups on the ground, particularly within uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, with a lot of the policy groups that tend to focus on the scientific or the legal or the technical aspect of this urging the Susquehanna River Basin Commission to take a more comprehensive, cumulative approach to issuing a lot of these water withdrawal draw permits. And not to get too technical, but especially with respect to sediment and erosion, tech, um, sediment and, erosion um, and the Chesapeake Bay TMDL, the daily diet of pollution that the bay is supposed to get. Um, and fortunately, what we have happened so far is that we've gotten the SRBC to agree that next year, in 2013, when they revise their comprehensive plan, they're actually going to take into account a cumulative impact analysis of uh, the natural gas industry's impact on the Susquehanna River Basin Commission and the water levels and the water quality and the water quantity issues. So we're looking forward to that work as well. Uh, we really want to thank um, Heinz. We really re appreciate their support, and we really appreciate being part of your spotlight. Thank you. This fall, the Ellis School continues a full slate of community programs to help parents and early childhood educators better understand the developmental and social needs of growing girls. Through discussions with renowned speakers and presentations from experts in the field of girls' education, the Ellis School welcomes community members and girls to these thought-provoking and diverse events for parents for girls ages 2.5 to 5 and for educators. Registration is required for all events. Most events are free. For detailed information and to register, visit theellisschool.org slash grow or call 412-661-4880. Registration for the 2012 Pittsburgh Polar Plunge is now open. The Pittsburgh Plunge will again be held at Heinz Field on Sunday, December 2nd. Registration and Plunge Town will open at 9 a.m. with a 1 p.m. plunge time. Plungers are asked to raise a minimum of $50 in donations. Two chicken to plunge? Cheers, your friends and family will take the plunge. With your $50 donation, you will receive a special two chicken to plunge shirt and will remain dry as you sip hot cocoa and snap priceless photos. October is Bullying Prevention Awareness Month. In support of Bullying Prevention Month, Achieva is providing a webinar as a resource for parents on how to recognize, deal with, and prevent bullying. The webinar is presented by Diana Schroeder, Pediatric Clinical Specialist and Director for Bullying Prevention Initiatives, Center for Health Promotion and Disease Prevention from the Windbar Research Institute, Center for Safe Schools. 
you can access the webinar at achieva.info slash webinars.jsp. Thanks for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. We're going to go get a slice on Broadway. So I said I'm going to crush it. Call me the golden boy because it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it. The flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole